clear to me and the changes that are going on in the marketplace seem to come forth here this morning and that is a lot of listings are being taken and a number of listings are being sold yes or no yes. so a lot of activity a lot of things going on if you've got a decent property in a decent neighborhood in decent condition at a fair market value that property's got a lot of people looking at it and a lot of offers coming in yes or no yes. okay so here's what we have to focus in on to absolutely ensure the rest of this month March and the balance of the first quarter and then focus in on the balance of the rest of the year but let's keep it let's keep it tight let's just focus on the next two or three weeks and those things that we can do in the next two or three weeks and then press those out into the second quarter that's coming in and I wrote down here it's very technical terms get more listings write that down okay yes you have to write that down and underline it and circle it and star it 16 times get more listings and then right under now right underneath it three letters N -O -W. N-O-W. Now. Now. <laughs> now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next month. You need that inventory right now. So I wrote down here what we've got to look at is we've got to look at our lead generating systems. We've got to look at where are we getting our business from and you know, we, have, we have things that we've been working on when we ran through the finish line back in October, November, and December. We were getting business from certain areas. We were doing certain things. We're working expires. We're working for sale by owners, past client and sphere. We're working non-owner occupieds. We're working our lawyers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all of these are different systems that we need to make sure that are working and up to speed. So I wrote down here. The question is, what systems do you have in place right now? So I want you to uh, just write the question. What system do I have in place right now? Don't answer it yet. What systems do I have in place? And then what can I do to enhance those systems over the next week or two or three and make them a little bit better going into the second quarter? Then the second question is, and we'll go over some other systems to make sure that there are other, because we know there are other areas that we're not working on that we might be able to get some business from. We, we, bless you, because we get, see, it's the truth. <laughs> so where do, we, what systems are we working on? What can we do to enhance those? And then the next step is what systems do we need to be working on and what do we need to do to build and en enhance those? I want you to write this down. This comes from, this is, all of the trainers, all of the people that you could be listening to, all of the books that we read, 70% of all the deals, think about this, 70% of all the transactions we do come from lead follow-up. 70% of all the transactions, and for some of you it's even higher, of all the transactions we do come from lead follow-up. So if you're only prospecting and you're not following up, you're missing a giant opportunity, right? Say yes. yes. Okay. But if you're not prospecting and filling up the leads and you're only following up on the few deals that you have, you're not filling your pipeline. So you gotta work on that. So I wrote down here, you need to schedule lead follow-up every single day you need to schedule lead follow-up every single day and it needs to be at multiple times during the day. If you're only following up in the morning when you're prospecting, you're missing an opportunity of talking to somebody on a lead follow-up that might be home at noontime. Right. Or they might be home at two in the afternoon. I mean, we have a lot of moms and dads that pick their kids up after school and they bring them home. They do a little bit of homework with them 
and then they go back out and they do other things through the day. So if you're not calling them at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, I think you're missing a big opportunity for the follow-up. So you could be calling in the morning, you could be calling at lunchtime, and a lot of people go home for lunch. A lot of people stop by the house for lunch. Make the phone call. Do the phone call around two or three o'clock in the afternoon when the kids come home from school. Make another follow-up call in the early evening, either around dinner time or after dinner. But you might have to follow up on the client multiple times during the day. So make sure you're doing that. Then I wrote down here, 80% of your day should be dedicated to looking for business. 80% of your day should be dedicated to looking for business. That's prospecting and lead follow-up. Prospecting is generating a lead. Lead follow-up is what? Appointment setting time. But 80% of your day should be in those activities right now only if you want to increase your listings. So here's the question underneath this. What percentage of my day, what percentage of my day is dedicated to generating leads, generating business? What percentage of my day is in generating business? Then I wrote down two things on mindset. These are two mindset thoughts that we need to be focused in on as we finish up March and go into our second quarter. The first one on mindset is find one great lead every single day. Find one great lead every single day. When you get up in the morning, that has to be your mission. Point one. Point two on mindset. You need to set one appointment per day. Remember what I've told you in the past. No appointment, no money. No appointment, what? No money. If, if, you can do, if you can show me how you can make money in this business without somehow either going on an appointment or having a phone appointment, well, I want to talk to you after this meeting, okay? I will dedicate the rest of the day to you. But what we find, no appointment, no money. It's that simple. All right? Okay. So, let's talk about where the business is coming from. So, first of all, past client and sphere of influence. Past client and sphere of influence is the foundation to our business. Past client and sphere of influence. So, we need to be emailing weekly. Write this down. This is only if you want to do business at a really high level. You need to be emailing weekly to your past client and sphere. You need to be sending snail mail on a monthly basis. You need to be calling them every other month. And the last thought is you need to be always giving outstanding customer service. Outstanding customer service. Now that's for the people that are working their past client and sphere. And all of you work your past client and sphere every day at one level or another, right? Say yes. Yes. Oh, it, <coughs> that was really weak, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, let's try this again. I work my past client and sphere at a really high level. Say yes. Yes. Okay. Now your noses are growing a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> Number two, expires. Business comes from past client and sphere. Business also comes from expireds, right? So what do we, where do, how do we get business from expireds? We call expireds, so write that down. So all of you are either calling or not calling your expireds. You're either door knocking or not door knocking your expireds. Another approach to expireds, some of you, look, we recommend that you door knock expireds, right? Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. And I suggest that you door knock expires and you don't use the phone because the phone isn't as efficient as the doors. And some of you listen to me and most of you don't. 
Yes. yes. No, you don't. <laughs> Listen to me. Okay, but that's okay. That's okay. What I'm trying to get you to do is I'm not saying that any one approach is absolutely better than another approach at any given time. What I'm asking you to do is to do your job on a regular basis. Does this make sense? Yes. If you do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it over a long period of time, you're going to make money in this business. So, for expireds, call them, door knock them. I wrote down there, mail to them. Mail to them. It's expensive. I don't think it's the best idea, but a lot of you don't listen to what I say anyway. So, I just want to throw that out as it's a possibility you can mail to them. And then I wrote down here, go see them again and again and again until what? They lift your dust. Or and or you meet them. <laughs> can you imagine if your job was to meet and just say hello to every expired? How your business would grow? How you could grow your, your business? Okay, next thought of where business could come from. Write down past expireds or old expireds. Past expireds or old expireds. I wrote down here, keep calling and going to the door until you meet them. Mail to them. This mailing to old expireds is slower and more expensive, but it is a source. Okay? It is a source of doing business. Next category of where business could come from. Write down for sale by owners. Write down for sale by owners. Now there's a couple of approaches to for sale by owners. There's the approach that we have here in the office uh, that's a system to research uh, where we're doing a, a script and dialogue where we're, 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 meet, we're calling the client or we're door knocking the client and we're doing the survey, right? And there's another approach, uh, I think a, an approach that I've suggested to a few of you to use and that is where you go to see the, ex, the for sale by owner at the door, but instead of taking a survey with you, all you want to do is preview the house. Right. It's all you want to do is preview the house. So I'm going to call up Cece, I'm going to use you as an example. So Cece, you're the, you're the client and I'm the agent. And I call you up and say, ring, ring. Hi, is this Cece? It is. Cece Neil Schwartz, Century 21 Masters. I noticed that you had a home for sale over there in West Covina. Is that home still available? It is. Great. You know, Cece, I'm going to be in the neighborhood this evening around 4 o'clock. I'd like to just come by and take a look at it. I know you're selling it yourself, correct? That's right. Right. Okay. So I, I'm not coming by for a listing or anything like that. I just want to come by and take a look at the property. So is 4 or 5 o'clock okay? Push me off. Today's not going to work. Today's not going to work for you? I, I can appreciate that. Well, can we do it tomorrow at 3 o'clock or would 5 o'clock be better? No, no, you don't want to sell the house because you don't want to sell the house to a real estate agent because you want to sell it yourself, correct? That's right. Right, okay. And so I, I get that. But you know, as a professional real estate agent, it's my job to see as many properties as I can, including for sale by owners. Now, I don't mind. I'm only going to be there for just a few minutes. Which is better for you? Six or seven o'clock tomorrow or would Friday be better? Oh, well, you know, Neil, what about Friday at seven? Friday at seven works great. So at Friday at seven, I go to the house. Okay? Now I have a listing contract in the car because that's who I am. I always have a listing contract in the car. But I don't take the listing contract with me in the house. What I take is the pre-listing, uh, pre-qualifying script. Okay? And the pre-qualifying script, and I go in the house, and normally we ask the client, when we're on a listing presentation, to, the client says, well, I'll show you the house. And we say to the client, no, that's okay, I'm going to take a look at the property myself. In this case, on a for sale by owner, it's reversed. Okay? Absolutely. Please show me the house. And as CC is showing me the house, what am I doing? Pre I'm pre-qualifying her. I have it right here on my clipboard. So Cece, when you sell this house, where are you guys moving to? And she says, Chicago. Wow, Chicago. 
when do you have to be there? Well, I need to be there in a, in a month or two. In a month or two, that's fantastic. Well, is it a business move? You're retiring. And you just go down what? The script. And you get all the information from the client. And during, the tra and during this conversation, at some point, so, you know, CC, you know, truthfully, if anybody could probably sell this house, I get the sense that you probably could. But you know, on the way outside chance, that isn't going to happen. When do you think you might be interviewing agents for the job of selling your home? When do you think you might do that? Well, you know, we're giving it two more weeks. Two more weeks? Yes. You know what, Cece, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to apply for the job of selling your home. Could we set an appointment now for let's say a week or a week and a half where I could come in and show you what I do to get home sold? I'm kind of curious. Do you know what I do to get home sold? Well, no, but that's... Great, that's exactly why we need to meet. So, next week on Wednesday night or would Thursday be better? Wednesday's great. Okay. Could you guys do that? Yes. Could you go to a for sale by owner and do that? Yes. How many for sale by owners do you think you could see by doing that? All of them, right? Exactly. So this was a system used a number of years ago in Arizona that was involved with helping a guy coach. And he went and saw 300 expireds that year doing this. 300 expireds. It was a big for sale by owner market. Excuse me. Went and saw 300 for sale by owners that year. He only took and sold 60 of them. That's horrible. Isn't that terrible? Terrible numbers. I'm not sure what he did wrong, so I suggested he do it again. <laughs> do you guys get this? That is, but you're not working for sale by owners because you think they're tough or tougher or they tend to eat their firstborn or one of those kinds of things. But you go in with a completely different approach. Your job, I tell you this all the time, your job more than anything else is to what? Preview property. Know the market of what's going on. When you know what's happening in the marketplace, then you know what the values are. And when you have a conversation with somebody, it's an easy conversation. Yes or no? Yes. You get where I'm going with this? Okay, so that's the for sale by owners. Next point. Let's write this down. Working with investors. Some of you are. Some of you are not. So there's a couple different investors that we're working, we're talking about. We're talking about the now flippers, but by the way, if you preview property and you know what the values are, when you run across a piece of property that happens to have a decent amount of equity, you can pick up the phone to one of your investors and say, hey, I got thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 worth of equity here. I think we're ten dollars or $15,000 worth of carpet, drapes, and paint. You can do something, turn around and, do, and make a little bit of a profit on that piece of property. But you can't do that unless you know the what? The market. You've got to preview pro You were wondering how long it was going to take me to get previewing into this presentation, right? Okay, good. I did it. Okay, so we have uh, investors. We have to identify them. We have to have a script to have a conversation with them. And then we have to have a database. Now maybe you only have three or four, five or six, 20 or 30. Doesn't matter. But you need to have them and work on that database. Then I wrote down here non-owner occupied in general. We have a lot of property that is non-owner occupied in our markets. There are tenant uh, occupied properties. A lot of these owners, for my, myself included, I own property that truthfully I haven't driven by in years. I haven't seen in years. I don't know what it looks like. It would be really great, it is great, when an agent calls me up and says, hey, you know, are you doing anything with your property? No, I wasn't planning on doing anything. Have you seen it lately? No, I haven't. Well, I just went by the property. I took a picture. Why don't I email it to you? That's a great service. Simple, no cost. You're out door knocking and previewing property anyway, right? What if you took a picture and sent it to the guy. Now maybe you don't have his email address, but when you call them and you get the information, you get their email address. I give you this, you get that. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, there, are, there are services and things to get phone numbers, but you can get them from the tenants. You ask the tenant. Now some tenants will never give you the phone number of the owner, but some will. 
ask. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could get three out of ten, that's, that's a pretty good percentage. Okay, so we talked about that. Again, identify them, work a script on, and then have a database. Then I wrote down here for rent, for rent signs. By the way, there's another answer. Generally, every for rent sign, unless it's a property management company, you're talking to who? The owner. The owner. And this is a database that you're going to build. So you're going to have this database of owners that you're talking to. Now they obviously know what the property looks like. But if you keep this database and keep this phone number and a couple of years from now send this in information, you've got some place to go with this. It's just a matter of keeping records. Then I wrote down here, just listed and just sold. Now all of you I know are working the hot market scripts in the just listed and just sold areas. But if you're not, work those at a higher level. We had, um, I don't know where it is, it's, oh, it's over there in the corner. Uh, we had our friends from Colonial Mortgage put together a 5510 in um, eight, seven or eight different languages. So um, hopefully it all says 5510 on there. <laughs> some of the languages I don't know, but thank you very much. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, but do a 5510. Go see five previews, go see five expires, and door knock 10 around it. And do that on a very regular basis. Then I wrote down here, uh, community organizations. Be visible, but not invisible. We're part of charities. We're part of service organizations. We're part of the Chamber of Commerce. Do those kind of services. Now, maybe they're not worth more than two or three transactions to you a year, but if you have eight or 10 places you get business, you get five or six from expireds, you get four or five from past client and sphere, you get five or six from just listed, just sold. You get one or two from, or them, from these organizations. You get one or two from an attorney or CPA. All of a sudden, you've got a 25 transaction year. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're not just doing expireds or you're not just doing past client and, and sphere. I wrote down here websites. Look, truth is, you're gonna get some leads from websites. Now, it's not 25 transactions in a year, but I'll bet you you could get one or two deals by having a website out there, capturing the lead, and doing the business. But if you're going to put a website out there, and you're not going to call that client for 24 to 48 hours, then don't do it. But if you're going to set yourself up on a website, and i got to tell you, Century 21's got some phenomenal website systems and some great tools that we're rolling out to you that are like free or almost free. Use them. They're simple. They're easy. Just use it. It's there for your benefit. Um, and check the, check the schedule for upcoming classes. I wrote down, we have affiliates. We, I, you know what, guys and gals? We have some great lenders that we're affiliated with, and they come in here, and they're prospecting next to you, doing work with you. Work something with them. Let them help you sit open houses. You guys are missing a great opportunity. Again, it's not 25 transactions. It's one or two over there, one or two over here. You have insurance affiliates. We've got home warranty people. We have appraisers. We have home inspectors. I mean, there's the, the list goes on and on. I wrote down here open houses. Some of your sellers demand you have an open house. They demand it, okay? Then do something with it. Plan it, door knock it, phone canvas around it, invite everybody to it. My gosh, you've gotta be there anyway, okay? Let's make the most out of this. So that's another source of business. How about networking with agents in this office? Mm -hmm. Networking with agents from, we have our friends here from Brea. They come over here from Brea and Chino, San Fernando, Valley. San Fernando Valley. So we send business over to San Fernando Valley. You know, Be Meg has done business uh, in Pasadena from some connections that she made with some of our agents in Irvine. You guys are missing an opportunity. We're great agents. Some of the best agents in, in Southern California, maybe even in the country, are part of this organization. You know, give yourselves a big hand, because that's really true. Okay, come on. It's true. Work with each other. Share the lead. If, if the lead's dead for you, give it to somebody else. Let them try to resurrect the dead if you can. Okay? But that's what we need to be doing 
amongst each other. You got the Ontario listing from Irvine because they did something with you. And, and it's in part because Virginia goes and prospects in some of those other offices and creates that relationship. That relationship opened a door. They had an opportunity over there. Boom. They, they didn't think of any, calling anyone else. They called her. Did you guys get this? Yes. Now you're not going to, again, that's not going to be 25 deals for her next year. But it's going to be one or two or three, and if you can do one or two or three in each one of these extra categories, that could be worth 10, 15, 20 transactions a year. Get it? Yep. Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so, I wrote down here. We need to remember we are in the meet the people business. Write that down. We are in the meet the people business. You must, must, must get more listings to thrive and excel in this marketplace in 2015. If you're not taking listings, you will always be working for someone else. I've got to get this point across. If you have listings, agents work for you. If you don't have listings, you're chasing around working for who? Them. You want to be an employer or an employee? Hello? Employer. Employer. Life is better. Employer, employee. You must be taking listings. I wrote down here, with listings you're the boss and all the other agents work for you. Get that mindset. I wrote down here, learn to be one of the greatest listing agents in the area where all the agents are working for you. Or you can continue to be like the other average agents and just getting by. The, tr the choice is yours. What's it going to be? Employer, employee. So let's focus on these activities. Let's focus on getting better, working on our skills every day, every week, every month, and make this the best second quarter we've ever had. Thank you very much.